Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. As promised, we're bringing Dennis Tan back onto the line. He is the fran a franchise owner and strategic partner over at Schoolie Mitchell. And I'm uh, proud to announce a newly published author in our best-selling Business Leaders book series over at Mission Manners. Hey, Dennis, just want to say welcome back to the show. Thank you, Adam. All right, Dennis. So uh, I'm excited for everybody watching this. For context, we're recording this in the, tw in t the end of 2022 in December, right before Christmas and uh, heading into the new year, 2023. A lot of things on business owners' minds. One of them, one of their biggest planning initiatives for many is really how to make best of resources going into the new year, what that looks like. I know Dennis also has some big announcements, but some new cost centers that they've added over at Schoolie Mitchell. So we're going to get into all this. We'll get into the book, of course, and, and uh, Dennis's contribution. But before we do all that, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Dennis, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Dennis, what mission matters to you? My mission that matters most is for me to be able to help others, whether it's in the community, business owner, you know, from a professional standpoint, that's what I do. I help businesses find ways to not overpay for, for their expenses, for, for what they, what they're worth. So yeah. my most important thing is just be able to help people out there. So, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely fighting for our small businesses, uh, business owners out there and a huge advocate. And, and we'll get into that advocacy. But I don't want to assume that all of our, our new listeners or new viewers caught our, some of the previous work we've done together in a previous interview. So, I mean, let's, let's go a little bit into your background. So tell us a little bit more about how you got on this entrepreneurial path. Well, I've worked for several, several businesses, you know, publicly traded businesses like Foot Locker. You know, I've been to the corporate world of politics and it, it, it's, it has, you know, got me a lot of educated resources and minds that I thought about, and it was time for me to just start on my own business. Yeah. I wanted to be, to be my own boss and I enjoyed helping people and, and be appreciated that way. So it's one of the things where it's been a, a great journey in the last three years to be my, my own boss and uh, to be an owner of a franchise. It's even better. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great. And, uh, and we'll talk more about Schoolie Mitchell, but first I want to get into, I want to get into the book. So your chapter and your contribution to that book, small changes, big savings. What was the inspiration for this? Well, it, it's, it's all about, you know, for, for anyone to even, even from a consumer standpoint, whether you're a consumer for, for your home, for your personal or for, for your business, mm -hmm. it's all about being able to find time to, to negotiate for a better pricing. Mm -hmm. And also it, it, it is to know, it, it is to have the resource to know whether are you overpaying? Am mm -hmm. I, am I paying the right price? What, what, what are other people paying? You know, what was the benefit for this? And, and sometimes people just don't have the time and resources to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, as, as, you, as you can tell, I mean, every business from the service side to manufacturing, everyone is at a shortage of employees. Yeah. Everyone's trying to find someone. They, they're trying to pick anyone off the street so they can work. And, and when, when, when businesses, business owners start to think that way, because, you know, employees are, are very important to them to make the business keep going, mm -hmm. your focus gets sidetrack so we have inflation going on right now are you actually keeping your costs down mm -hmm. or, are, or are you actually not worrying about that but just mm -hmm. simply focusing on employees working for you mm -hmm. um, you know it, it's difficult to juggle those things around just just mm -hmm. to see where things get you so like for us for me it, it's one of those things where it's great that mm -hmm. i'm solely focused on on optimizing businesses expenses so that they're not over yeah. And one of the things you talk about in your, in your chapter is really getting the best deals you can and, and asking for help. 
And this part about asking for help, I I think it, it's genius because it's not. It, it seems like the obvious, but it's not. Like many times, we think that we're we're either getting the best deal on a particular service or on, on something, but we don't necessarily know what we know. So tell us uh, what we don't know, obviously. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more on your ideas and why it's so important <clears throat> to ask for help. Many businesses, you know, as I prospect out clients, people say, oh, this is going to take too much of my time. I don't have the time for that. I don't have the resources. Yeah. Actually, if, if I sit down with them and say, hey, give me 15 minutes of your time, right? Mm -hmm. I get all the documents I need. They tell me, okay, great, let's do it. They send me off to the assistant. I get get the, the information I need from them within another 15 minutes. And, and, and you know, I do all, we, my, my team does all the analysis and uh, come back to them in about, you know, 68 weeks with, with, caught with savings. It, it, it's actually not a lot of time spent on, 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 on my client side, except to say, Hey, we're here to help. You know, it takes a while for us to, to, to do the analysis because we want to make sure that, you know, we got all the facts, right. Yeah. And that way we can, when we present it for, for, for a better pricing, we can get you the best pricing. And it's not like we're going to have the clients stay on the phone with the telecom company for an hour trying to get the best deal. It's not, it's not, it's nothing like that. You yeah. know, it, we do all the work behind the scenes for the clients and uh, make sure that at the end of the day, my client's not spending too much time trying to figure mm -hmm. out, am I paying too much or not? It, they are just spending more time doing what they do best. So if it's running the business, mm -hmm. they can spend more time running the business rather than focusing on expenses. Yeah. And, and again, like the idea that you're going to be able to do that yourself, a lot of times, even if they did have the time, it's not, it's not an appropriate use when you have, in my opinion, a team like yours or in Schooly Mitchell that are available to kind of take that, to take that load or that weight off your shoulders. So I think it's awesome. Another point that you, that you really make here is to avoid contract traps. Again, sounds obvious, but in your, in your career, like what kind of things have you seen? Well, you know, every, every business have a contract, right? A mm -hmm. statement of work or a, yeah. a contract, some, some may say. And, and some, these contracts are, are generally flexible. It's not mm -hmm. always, you just, it's not something that you always have to agree on. Mm -hmm. Every line item, you can always make changes. You know, bigger businesses, uh, co larger corporates will say, you know, if you give me this, this, this con service agreement, I would have to get my legal team to take a look at it takes an hour, an hour, three, six months sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. and then there'll be a red pen, the whole thing, a red line, the whole thing mm -hmm. and say, this is, this is on our, on, on our side, take it this way or, or no way, mm -hmm. you know, but most of the contracts that you see oftentimes get their clients locked in, mm. you know, sometimes like in, in the garbage or waste mm -hmm. uh, environment, medical waste, your normal garbage or recycling. You know, they, they lock you in in a three year contract, 36 months or 60 month contract. Yeah. That's fine and dandy. Sometimes it's okay to, to do that. Sometimes it's, they say, well, they'll give you the best pricing if you sign up five years with us. Yeah. But what, what they fail to see in a fine print is, is their inflation cap, is mm. their additional fees, what are the fees? And sometimes these things are not pointed out. So when you do something wrong, mm. they, they actually penalize you heftily. Mm -hmm. uh, for those things. And then, you know, if you try to get out of it, you can't get out of it. Or maybe after three years, you said, oh, I, uh, three years down the road, I'm going to get out of it. You know, so on the 35, the 35th month, you try to call a different band and say, hey, I want to, I want to use you and I want to stop the other one. And mm -hmm. then your current, current vendor said, no, you can't because you, to, for that to happen, you got to tell us 120 days in advance. Mm -hmm. Well, who's going to remember that? No one mm -hmm. is. So, so it can be very difficult if, if you know, right now with, with the, the, with many companies having a revolving door of employees, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to remember which contract is which, what year am I supposed to renew it? Am I go, mm -hmm. am I going to remember 90 to 120 days before I'm supposed to send a, a cancellation letter, yeah. uh, things like that. You know, even in, even in other cost categories, they sometimes will lock you in on the service for three years. Mm. But the equipment might be four years. Mm. So how does that work, right? And that's not <laughs> fair to the client at all. And if people don't 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 mm. don't uh, see that in the contract, you're like looking at mm. it, all the fine prints like, yeah, three years, okay, so, I mean they just sign it, right? They, they don't yeah. really go line by line. So it, it's a, it's one of those things where 
when people don't really understand a contract mm -hmm. or they, they, they seem that, oh, yeah, I trust this salesperson. Three mm -hmm. years is fine. You know, I'll, I'll just sign it, be done because I need the services anyway. Well, mm -hmm. I advise people to be more cautious on that. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that you're, that you're elaborating on in the chapter is watching out for the extra fees or hidden fees. You say extra fees, though. Like, what, what does that mean? You know, when, when someone says like, uh, like in the last, in the last year, uh, you know, we've seen the economy, inflation rates go up, fuel prices at a pump went up. So yeah. any, any company, any business that utilizes shipping or like, like mm -hmm. shipping, you know, or they, they use a vehicle. So like to pick up your, 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 your garbage, your, your mm -hmm. trucks, they started adding things like fuel surcharge, administrative fees environmental fees because recycling is now cost more than, than ever before. So all these fees or, or, or a panel of yeah, fees in general, mm -hmm. extra charges, surcharges are just mm -hmm. added onto the bill. And, and when someone calls the, the one her number on a statement, it's like, mm -hmm. sorry, we can't help it. This is, this is a, it's a new thing we do for all our clients, you know, just yeah. gotta pay for it. And then what do you do? You're just like, okay. And you hang up. Yeah. But uh, where we come from is, is we take a look at it and say, okay, what is the rate? What kind of rate are you charging? Is this, is an adjustable rate? Is it going to be a six months down the road, 12 mm -hmm. months down the road? Is it, can we lock in a, a, a low rate to, for, for the next year or two, just so that, you know, we, we can be on a safe side. Yeah. All this is something that, you know, we, we help our clients through because mm -hmm. we, we, we don't want people to be overspending. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's struggling. You know, you're not the only one, you know, everyone mm -hmm. is struggling. So we try to do our best to just help people out. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I, I one of the reasons I love bringing you on the show is because I think the one, you know, one side of things that, that gets a lot of the attention is, you know, obviously, you know, sales, bringing in more clients, more revenue, but what I see and what I see that you're, you're just an expert, you and your team on is it's like, okay, well, what about what you already have and being a good steward of that? Because some of the things that you may not think are negotiable or that you may think are status quo, exactly like you just said, they are. And if you have the right team working for you and going in there and, and trying to secure you the best deal and the other things like, like that, that can be meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. Now, well, one of the things here is that you know, many companies, whether you're in the telecom side of things mm -hmm. or waste disposal or merchant fees or fleet fuel, or even software as a service, you know, with mm -hmm. Google, Adobe, Microsoft, things like that. Mm -hmm. Every company, if they want to in try to increase sales, there's always going to be some sort of a promotion, a promotional pe period for, for some, for some of the yeah. services, right? Some cost. Yeah. Correct. So if say, for example, oh, my, my, my numbers this year is this month is not so good. Hey, let's increase, let's do something, increase it, you know, and things like that. So they, yeah. they might throw out, throw out some things from time to time and, and the consumers don't really know when that happens. Right. Yeah. So for us is, is, is that, you know, we may, we, we can have, we can have our clients or my client can call somebody and say, Hey, what's the best deal right now? And they said, okay, mm -hmm. this is your best deal lock in for a year. And oh, you're just so happy. You just hang up. Or sometimes you say, "Oh no, you you got a best deal right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we can't do anything." Mm -hmm. For us, when we when we have 250 franchisees around North America, mm -hmm. we are consistently knowing what the price is every day. Mm -hmm. If we come across someone having a better price <laughs> on the total opposite side of the country, we want to make sure that happens here too, right? Yeah. So once we know that the, 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 the pricing has, has dropped, we're going to call mm -hmm. everyone and say, Hey, we can do this audit for you. We can find savings for you. Would you like to take, take, take advantage of it? Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we help clients. Cause I have clients that we found savings for them when we implemented right off the bat, you know, 50% mm -hmm. savings for, for trash. And a month or two later, I'm coming back to them and say, Hey, we found another 10% more. Would you like it? So it, it's really amazing that, that, that the work we do here is, is we consistently make sure that our clients are not overpaying. Yeah. And I want to, I want to spend some time that we have here too, and talk about some of the new cost categories and things that you're offering. So let's go further into just Schooly Mitchell in general and how you work with people and some of those new cost categories as well. 
So, Puli Mitchell recently had a, a annual conference in Jamaica. It was nice and warm compared Ah, to you poor Wisconsin. guy. I remember we talked before <laughs> that. I know. Poor guy. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, they, they have released several new ca- cost categories, actually. Mm-hmm. So, so now Schooly Mitchell is able to take a look at the uniforms and linens, textiles, facility mm-hmm. supplies, your your welcome rugs in, in, mm-hmm. in your facility. We also do, we have expanded our shipping category to those LTL, less than a truckload shipping as well. We do unified communication as a service because everything is all, people want it, want it integrated with their mm-hmm. phones, a text message, voicemail on the computer, everything. And software as a service, you know, we, we deal with Adobe, Microsoft, Google Cloud, cloud accounts, um, cloud mm-hmm. software. And, and these are the areas that, you know, we can find savings for people because oftentimes either there's a, an error in the bills or mm-hmm. for like the uniforms and linen, sometimes they sign a contract for 25 uniforms, right? And mm-hmm. then the employees get come and go, come and go, and you never know what you're paying anymore. And sometimes they just leave it as 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 a contract contracted price of x amount of uniforms but yet you have less employees why are you paying for for all that extra right so these things are all all something that can be negotiated from time to time Mm -hmm. volume to volume it's all always different from every number of of set of uniforms you get it's always Mm -hmm. a different number it supplies as well you know when you increase your usage you should get a better pricing so just don't call and say increase increase my frequency well mm. you know, make sure you get a, a a good deal in it too yeah you know things like uh, less than a truckload you know I, you may ship a package or two with ups fedex but you know what is it if i got a whole semi full right that should be right. a better pricing too so it's one of those things that we can now actually take a look at that and, and make sure that you know as, as we help e-commerce companies to to ship out their the daily daily orders it's something that we can actually do even more now because we have less than a truckload as, as one of our cost categories yeah so as as we all i mean as this is being recorded going to 2023 for all the business owners and the entrepreneurs in context to their to their costs and then to savings and things like that like what are some of the the priorities that you sh- you would say should be on their mind as we go into 2023 well i say many many companies that i for many business owners that i've spoken in the last quarter as they mm-hmm. plan for the year end quarter and and for 2023 forecasts, mm-hmm. many have, have mentioned that, you know, we are in a new new norm, all right? Mm-hmm. Instead of receiving orders and be able to ship out in an X number of days, like, mm-hmm. you know, four weeks, one month, you know, you order something today, we ship it out in a month. Now mm-hmm. that has all changed. The whole business method of, of ordering, making it, manufacturing it, and shipping it out to the clients, the dynamics have changed so great that, it's no longer one month. It's mm. six months minimum to nine months. And and so people are are are, are paying for things in advance. They are they are paying a higher rate because of inflation. Mm. And so my advice to clients is even though there is inflation tag on to your supplies and then you take it on, you know, you add it on to your clients. Mm. One of the things to just make sure is that what are your expenses? Mm. You know, you want to try to increase revenue. But yet it's hard because you can't really increase mm-hmm. the profit, right? You can increase revenue, but you can increase profit because mm-hmm. you take on inflation back to the client. And clients are struggling too. So they say, give me the best price. So you, you, you are increasing revenue, but not profit. So how, how, mm-hmm. do, you, how do you tackle ways to improve profit, right? Let's mm-hmm. take a look at your expenses. Let's see how we can reduce your expenses, not necessarily by mm-hmm. taking away services, but making sure that your expenses are optimized, you know, making mm-hmm. sure that you're not overpaying for something that you, you are using, yeah. you know, across the board from all our cost category expenses, mm-hmm. we, we can at least save businesses at least 30% on mm-hmm. all the expenses. So I've got clients from, you know, from, from a broad spectrum, from, from just one cost category to, to mm-hmm. four or five cost categories. And certain ones may, we may save them 56%. For yeah. some of them, it may mean maybe 12%, but on average across everything, we, we save them at least 30% easily. Yeah. 
It's awesome, Dennis. I'm, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. I mean, you're really advocating for small businesses out there, helping them, you know, save on those cost categories, which is a big deal. That being said, Dennis, if somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more, they want to connect with you and your team, what's the best way for them to follow up and to do that? Well, they can always give me a call, you know, email me, find me on, on, on online, Google, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we can put messages down below for that. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm always, I, I stay in touch with, with people. I, I pick up every call if, if I can, and I, I help every, anyone, anyone and everyone from, from yeah. across the United States. So it's something that if, if someone feels that it's beneficial for them to take a look at your cost, it's, it's risk-free. There's no, there's no cost to do a free audit for, for, mm -hmm. for, for prospective clients. All we do is, is we do the audit, find if there's any mm -hmm. savings, if we implement those savings, we just share the, the savings. And we'll put all the links to like your LinkedIn profile and other things like that into the show notes so that uh, our audience can just click on the, on the link and head right on over and check you out. And also uh, pick up a copy of that book. So I'm excited to continue promoting the book and uh, for, for our readers to get your information and knowledge, because that's why we do this. I mean, we want to spread value to, to, uh, to our listeners and readers. And speaking of the, if this is your first time connecting with a Mission Matters episode or the platform, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their backgrounds, their mission, and really why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and what we can all learn and gain from that together. Because the goal is for us all to grow, right? So if that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Dennis, again, thank you so much for coming on the on the show again and uh, thrilled to be out here promoting this book with you. So thanks for coming back on. All right, thanks, Adam.